This is semaglutide, also known under the brand name Ozempic, a medication initially used to treat type 2 diabetes. Besides helping control blood sugar, semaglutide proved to be effective for weight loss, which led to a surge in off-label use of the drug just for losing weight. In 2021, the FDA approved semaglutide for weight loss under the brand name Wegovi, a higher dose version of Ozempic meant to be used specifically for weight management. Since then, it has been all over TikTok TikTok and the news. Elon Musk tweeted about it, many Hollywood celebrities are rumored to be taking it, and Ozempic jokes have even made it to the Oscars. Everybody looks so great. When I look around this room, I can't help but wonder, is Ozempic right for me? Skyrocketing demand for Wegovy and Ozempic has made Novo Nordisk, the Danish company producing the two drugs, into the second most valuable publicly traded company in Europe after LVMH, with the market value of Novo Nordisk surpassing the size of the entire Danish economy. Demand for the drug has risen to the point that Novo Nordisk is struggling to produce enough, leading to a worldwide shortage and uncertified versions of semaglutide being sold in sketchy clinics. Other pharmaceutical companies are racing to come up with cheaper and possibly more effective alternatives that target weight loss. And the way that this new generation of weight loss medication works is incredibly fascinating compared to the weight loss drugs of the past. Before getting into the details of the weight loss revolution that's happening right now, let's establish a little bit of context. Although worldwide obesity has nearly tripled since 1975, the craze for weight loss medication isn't really a new phenomenon. Some of the earliest weight loss meds were amphetamine derivatives that had an appetite-suppressing effect. First such medication approved by the FDA in 1947 was methamphetamine. It was often produced in a combination with other amphetamine salts, for example, under the brand name Obitrol. Amphetamines were also mixed with other potent ingredients that were supposed to induce weight loss, like thyroid hormones that were added because they accelerate the metabolism, and laxatives. These drugs became known as rainbow diet pills because of their color-coded different formulations. AIDS was another popular brand of amphetamine weight loss pills that was sold as flavored candy. Yes, during the 50s and 60s, you could pick between caramel and chocolate-flavored weight loss pills. The active compound in AIDS was PPA, or phenylpropanolamine, which suppressed appetite but was withdrawn from the market due to safety concerns and a potential link with an increased risk of stroke. Amphetamine-derived compounds are central nervous system stimulants. They increase the concentration of neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, Nephrine and serotonin in the brain to varying extents depending on the type of amphetamine. They also activate the sympathetic nervous system, which regulates the unconscious fight or flight response in our body. This is why the adverse effects of amphetamine medication are restlessness, anxiety, sweating, and high blood pressure. So by the 1990s, growing concern for cardiovascular risk and addiction potential led to a market decline in the use of amphetamines for weight loss. And in the 90s, a new weight loss drug entered the market called Fen-Fen. This medication was also an appetite suppressant. The fenfluramine induces the release of serotonin in the brain, and fentermine, also an amphetamine derivative, releases norepinephrine. Just a few years later, in 1997, reports of heart valve disorders caused by this medication led to its withdrawal from the market. Soon after that, in 1999, a weight loss medication that had a completely different mechanism of action was approved by the FDA, Orlistat. While amphetamines worked by by making you feel less hungry and therefore eat less, Orlistat worked by preventing the absorption of dietary fats in the intestine. About 25% of the fat consumed would instead pass through undigested, therefore reducing the overall amount of calories consumed. But Orlistat also came with some uncomfortable side effects like oily stools and vitamin deficiencies because it prevents the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. 
patients. While Orlistat is still being prescribed for weight loss today, it is not nearly as effective as the GLP-1 based medication that's kind of having a moment right now. So what is semaglutide, the active compound in Ozempic and Wegovi? Semaglutide belongs to a class of drugs known as GLP-1 based medication. GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide 1 is a hormone that governs digestion and appetite and it is produced by our body naturally when we eat. So for this purpose we have natural GLP-1 receptors in our brain and in our stomach. And semaglutide is made to mimic GLP-1. It binds to the GLP-1 receptors in the brain, suppressing hunger cravings and signaling to our brain that we are full. And in the stomach, semaglutide slows down gastric emptying so that food is digested more slowly, making us feel full for longer. And this mechanism of action is proving to be way more successful than any weight loss medication of the past. In a 2021 clinical trial, people taking weekly semaglutide injections lost a mean of 15% of their body weight. Another GLP-1 medication on the market today that may be even more effective is terzepatide, aka Mondaro, developed by Eli Lilly. Like Ozempic, it targets the GLP-1 receptors in our brain and stomach, but it also mimics the hormone GIP, which stimulates insulin secretion. Mondaro is currently only approved for treating type 2 diabetes, but Eli Lilly is seeking FDA approval for for its use in weight loss. Another GLP-1 drug, liraglutide, aka Victoza, seems to show that there is potential for the use of GLP-1 medication beyond just diabetes and weight loss. In a study published this August, researchers investigated how it affects associative learning ability in people with and without obesity. Associative learning is the process in which our brain associates some kind of external stimuli with a positive or negative consequence, like associating a glowing red stove with a risk of burning our hand. In this study on liraglutide, researchers made two interesting discoveries. First, they found that there's a connection between obesity and the resulting reduced insulin sensitivity and impaired associative learning. This suggests that when cells become resistant to insulin, they don't just carry the risk of developing type 2 diabetes, but their insulin resistance actually interferes with the ability to learn by association. Second, the researchers found that treating those participants with liraglutide returned their associative learning ability back to normal levels. And this is definitely what fascinated me the most when it comes to GLP-1 based medication because it draws attention to an important fact. And that is that treating obesity with long-term success is way more complicated than burn more calories than you consume or eat less, exercise more. These studies on GLP-1 drugs are shedding light on the behavioral and brain changes that come with obesity. Another study published in July 2023, this is the last study that I'm going to reference, bear with me, it's really interesting. The study showed that the brains of people who are obese release less dopamine in response to food compared to those with a healthy weight. And more shockingly, even after these people lost 10% of their body weight, this brain response didn't return to normal, which is maybe why so many people struggle with keeping the weight off after successfully losing it. This unfortunately means means that obesity may cause long-lasting changes to our brain chemistry that will remain even after losing the weight. While it's exciting to read all of this new research aimed at understanding and treating obesity, GLP-1 medication doesn't come without side effects. People seem to be reacting differently to these drugs. Some people can handle them better, other people report side effects from nausea to pancreatitis, and the biggest risk is maybe that we don't yet know the exact long-term effects of GLP-1 medications on the body. Another concern with drugs like Ozempic is that they will likely have to be taken indefinitely to prevent people from gaining the weight back. Anyways, I'm super excited to read the upcoming results of research on drugs like Ozempic. Currently, there is a trial examining the effect on suppressing alcohol
alcohol cravings after a study on monkeys showed that they drank less when treated with Ozempic. So there is perhaps the promise of using GLP-1 medication in addiction treatment in the future. That's all from me for today. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy science discussions like this. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one.